Here on the screen. Uh, we had a great collaboration both with the staging team and the sound engineers. I'm very happy. I really love my girls, the backing vocals. They did a great job. And of course, it was just the first rehearsal. There are many things to improve and to work on, but that's why we're here. Were you nervous? Uh, yes. I'll be brutally honest with you and say yes. I was very nervous the first time and then I was getting more and more relaxed. Uh, you know, the second time, the third time, and then the fourth time. I think that one was the best. What are your main impressions about the stage and the Eurovision arena and all those people around you? It's huge. Um, I mean, it's my first experience of this kind. So it was a very challenging to face everything and that many people taking care of me and uh, my backing singers and people continuously coming and approaching me, uh, asking if I need anything, bringing me water. I was like, whoa, I might get used to this. <laughs> Thank you. So now we're going to take questions from our floor. Please, of course. Us. Any questions? Hello? <coughs> Hi, Alistair Birch from Eurofile. I have a question. You performed um, a year or two back with Calliope for the 20 years of independence. Yes, um, I did. Can you, can you tell us a little, little about that? The, the, the thing with the high heels? And how do you deal with the unexpected on television? <laughs> this is a great question. Uh, thank you. And thank you for your research, first and foremost, because not many of your colleagues have brought this up so far. Um, yes, uh, Calliope was actually the judge uh, in the Macedonian Idol where my musical career began. And after uh, finishing the show, she invited a couple of the singers, like the four of us, she invited four of us to perform with her at the 20th anniversary of our country's independence. And yes, it was tricky um, because I was wearing like super high heels on stage and I twisted my ankle, but luckily one of my colleagues, Dan, his name is Dan, he was super tall and super strong, so, so he helped me, like I, I bent on him, <laughs> he caught me. Um, how I deal, I just go with the flow, the audience mustn't see if anything is going wrong, so you need to put your game face on and focus. As well, we know that she gave a present to you, her earrings, right? Yes, she did, she did. Uh, on the first audition, um, she liked what I did, so she gave me one of her earrings, but the other earring was a condition and a motivation at the same time, so I had to work even harder, get even better, and a couple of concerts later, I think it was the fourth show, I was singing Think by Aretha Franklin, and that's when I earned uh, my second earring from Calliope. Did you bring them here to you? You are kind of my lucky charm. Thank you for that. So, uh, do we have more questions from our press, from journalists? Can you tell us more, please, about your performance on stage and, of course, about messages of your song? Okay, I'll begin with the message of my song. Uh, it's a very energetic, but at the same time, kind of sad song. Uh, not said in the term, in, in a way that it makes you cry, but in the way that it makes you think. So it's about the, it's about stopping and smelling the roses in life. So uh, you don't need to rush anywhere because what is yours, it will come to you. And it also reminds us of how all of us, I would even use the term no exceptions, all of us tend to dance alone, but at the same time, seeking for someone to dance with, which I think it, it's very oxymoronic, but very natural at the same time. So I would say that uh, people need to take their time in life and just go with the flow. So that time guide we have there on the screen, we don't have to care about it, right? The, the like time? we have only 10 minutes and 20 oh, minutes. Oh no, <laughs> okay. we just care about that. Uh, we care about the time in terms of using it the best way possible. And about your performance on stage? What My you performance on stage um, looks the way it looks thanks to Ambra Suchi, uh, the stage director and choreographer. Uh, she has helped me a lot in like giving myself into the movements, not just copying <laughs> the moves she has shown me. Um, it's about an independent woman, a strong woman, a sexy lady, 
uh, having fun with herself and enjoying the moment. Can you tell us more, please, about your experience from the item which you're basically bringing to Eurovision? What did you get, the main thing that you will show here on stage? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the idol, I, I was only 17 when I, when I took part in the show, so I learned a lot there and it happened to me in a time where changes are natural for people. I was 17, so I was like on the border between underage and 18, and then it was the transit from high school to, to university, uh, and also from anonymous to public, uh, like a public figure. So it has changed me a lot, mostly in terms of uh, communicating with media, controlling my language, uh, being very picky when it comes to words, because words are the main tool of communication, and communication is the main tool of understanding, and what would we be if we didn't understand, if we couldn't understand each other. It has also taught, uh, taught me to um, like use uh, the stage fright and nervousness in a positive manner. It has taught me to uh, be more confident, even fake confidence sometimes. It helps you when you're on stage. Yes, so many lessons. I mean, I could go on forever. Do we have more questions? Yes, question. Hi. Oh, hi, hi, sorry. Paolo from Google Occupation Magazine in France. Hello. Uh, Salut. <laughs> Bonjour. Ça va? Merci, très bien. Et vous? Uh, merci. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you feel a little bit pressure because Macedonia didn't qualify since uh, many years? I think the last time was Calliope. Yes, 2012. Yes. And uh, is it more difficult when uh, to participate when the country hasn't been in the final since a long time? I wouldn't say it's pressure. It's more like additional motivation to bring my country back to the finals. So I'm very determined <laughs> this time. Uh, and uh, what was the other part of the question? Uh, that, that was it? Yeah. So, yeah, no pressure. Thank you. Please, next question is there. Hey, Anna Gil from uh, yesterday.com. Hello. Can you tell us about uh, the story of your video clip, about the VR? It's very special in, and innovative, and uh, there must be something uh -huh. more behind it. I have a little question for you. Are you working with computers, or are you like an engineer or something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, because mostly uh, I get this question or um, mostly computer engineers or like people who work with programming and a lot of technology, they are super excited about the VR set. <laughs> That's why I, I had that question. Uh, the story. Well, uh, everyone can interpret it differently, but in my opinion, the old lady which is the old Yana and the Yan Yana are existing at the same time uh, and the actual time in the video is when the old Yana exists so she is thinking back uh, of what she did in her life before and you can see it in her face that she is like regretting something and through the VR set she doesn't literally go back to time, but she's only seeing the projection of herself in a, like in a parallel universe. Um, and I think uh, the real plot twist happens at the end of the song, Happy Dancing On My Own, Wishing You Could Hold Me Close, because up till then, the, the, the first three minutes and some, a few seconds, uh, the song is really strong, really independent, and you can see the young Yana dancing and like flirting with the guy, and then in the end, she... Uh, it, I'm sorry, I need to go back a little. Yes, she's dancing with the guy, pushing him away, but in the end, she is all alone because she insisted on dancing alone while she was young. And she is missing this person saying that she wishes he could hold her close. Thank you. Welcome. We have one more question from there. Hello. Hello. 
I'm asking a question on behalf of my colleague from Brazil. She oh, Brazil! I love Brazil. I have a friend from Brazil. Her name is Juliana. They said you are one of the biggest favorites in the Brazilian community. Oh, Your song reached number 13 on the Spotify playlist. Mm -hmm. So Do you expect the fuss around Dance Alone to be also big in Brazil? Excuse me, can you repeat the question? Do you expect the fuss around uh, Dance Alone to also be big in, well, outside of Europe, to, like in Brazil or somewhere else? Oh, I hope so. Brazil is one of the countries I would love to visit, so please say hello to your friends, saudades, beijinho no ombro. Um, just say hello to your friends in Brazil, and if you have any connections, I'd be happy to perform Dance Alone in Brazil and continue the story of Dance Alone in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, muito obrigada. Perfect. Next question we have here. Hi, I have another question. I saw you, or I didn't see you, I heard reports you were seen driving a Segway around downtown Skopje recently. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. What's the experience like? Have you seen the many Segways here at Eurovision and have you been tempted to join in? Oh, I haven't actually seen any Segways here uh, in the venue. They're all over the place. Okay, well, yes, it's such an amazing experience and I find it very eco-friendly and also very pragmatic because it helps you move around town with the speed of a car but taking less space. Uh, with, and you know, doesn't produce anything that could cause damage to the air we're breathing. So I love to segue, definitely, yes. Thank you. Jana, I know you are doing uh, a lot of charity work. For example, you've been singing for different charity events, you were at UNICEF. Can you please tell us more about this? Uh, yes, uh, back in, uh, everything began in 2011. Ah, that's a spontaneous confetti for us. <laughs> Uh, everything began back in 2011 um, when I got more of the public's attention. So people started inviting me to sing to different charities and I've heard so many touching stories I simply couldn't say no. And it became kind of an addiction but it also helped me find my place in this world, not just exist like being here but also helping others uh, be there in the right way. Uh, UNICEF was a wonderful project, um, it was called Schools Free of Violence, so we had a couple of activities devoted to uh, uh, not preschool but elementary school and high school students. Somebody we were visiting schools and we were talking to children on you know, how violence isn't the key, how they need to use conversation instead of the fist. We even recorded a song uh, on the subject. Uh, it was very beautiful, wonderful experience. I've also done a lot of charity um, concerts for people with um, spinal atrophy. Um, I'm not sure about the terms in English because most of them are either in Macedonian or Latin. Uh, children with autism, Down syndrome, also Rotinopathy, um, I'm not sure about the the term in English, but many, many concerts, which makes me feel like a good person. Thank you. Do we have more questions from, from our floor? One more? Sure. I, I have a question about when you were younger. Your interest, can you tell us about your interest in Harry Potter? And what happens when you received the letter? You know the one I'm talking about. Oh, wow! Where do you get all this information, mister? Yes, I, I still love Harry Potter. Um, I was introduced to Harry Potter with one of my co closest friends in primary school. His name was Marco. Hi, Marco. He is somewhere in the world. Last time I checked, he was in Japan, then he went to Spain, then like he's all over the world. He's a very talented artist. So yeah, he introduced me to Harry Potter and it was the book that taught me how important it is for a person to read in general. I got so addicted and I, I, I even sometimes, uh, I find my getaway in the Harry Potter books. I'm, I'm really stressed out. I just pick a, a random uh, like chapter and just read through the pages. I love it. And uh, I got a fake invitation to Hogwarts 
you know, it was very exciting until the moment I found out it was fake. <laughs> it broke my heart. I was really depressed. And of course, I had a huge crush on Daniel Radcliffe, the actor who plays Harry Potter. Um, I think it's a wonderful story and it is very complicated at the same time of inventing a whole parallel society with like legal system, with the economics, with an educational system. It's very well, like, thumbs up to rolling. <laughs> Joan, I'm sorry. Thank you. But you don't have to be upset, you always can go to Universal Studios all over the world, especially in California, they have like... Yes, very of course, world. I can even get a role in some of the upcoming movies. <laughs> exactly. So, as well, I wanted to ask you that you have a very strong team, right? Yes, you my team. Kylie Mino, with Lady Gaga, yes. some of them, so please tell about this, and do you yes. this, like a strong backup with you? Yeah, the team we're talking about is Symphonics International. Uh, the composers of the song of Dance Alone are Borislav Milano, Joachim Pirson, uh, Florence A, and Alex Somar. They have a very rich and successful Eurovision experience too. Uh, they worked with one of our uh, previous representatives, Daniel Kaimakoski. They also worked with Poli Genova last year. So they know the drill when it comes to Eurovision. So do we have more questions? Thank you very much, Jana Borcheska from Macedonia. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for everything.